him to the, the people going, going back to Egypt, he, he was doing well and then all of a sudden he was put in prison for wrong accusation. And he spent years in prison. And it's a test for him. He waited and then his time came. Moses waited a long time before he can discover his purpose in his life. Abraham waits a hundred years before he has Isaac. Noah had to wait 120 years before he saw rain. Can you imagine how long 120 years is? Waiting for the rain. And by faith he trusted God that it will rain and it will have flood. And that the boat that he's building will actually float. 120 years. So you're not alone when you're waiting in God. Most of the time we get in a hurry. But God is not in a hurry. So remember, there's always a delay between planting and harvesting. There's spiritual battle going on whenever you wait in God. And remember that God is preparing us for the answer. And then number five, remember, God always keeps his promises. Amen? God always keeps his promises. You need to remember that. When we are discouraged in this life, we need to always remember that God keeps His promises. That's what we need to do whenever we are waiting in God. Because God is God and we're His creation. He is God. He can take His time. And what it doesn't matter how Frustrated we are in waiting for Him, He will still give us what is best for us because He is faithful. So, what do you do in the waiting room? When we're waiting in God, His promises is there. He said, my promises is true and it will happen. And so, when we wait in God, we don't focus on what we don't have. When we're waiting on God, we don't focus on what we cannot do. When we're waiting on God, we focus on what God can do and what God will do. And so one of the things that we can do when we wait on God is to focus on His promises. And when you focus on the promises of God, it reminds you of His faithfulness. And then you become at peace. The Bible says, Anything is possible if you have faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says, God says, At the time I have decided, my words will come true. You can trust what I say about the future. It may take a long time, but keep on waiting. It will happen. Now, some of you have to write this on a index card and put it in your refrigerator or maybe somewhere in your wallet or nearby because this is a lesson for us. God says it may take a long time but keep waiting it will happen. Now some of us have been praying for a loved one to be saved for um, a relationship to be restored and keep waiting because it will happen. Did you know that there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible? So that many promises, thousands of promises in the Bible are actually a blank check that you just have to claim. So whenever you're discouraged, whenever you're struggling, wherever you're going through a tunnel, just claim the promise of God that He will be there. And He's right there with you. Alright, so we're done with what do you need to remember. Now let's go to what do I need to do while waiting in God. Now there are four things that we can do while waiting on God. First of all, we need to have a notebook and a pen while we wait on God. Why? Because you need to write down the lessons that you're learning. Now here comes the journal or journaling. So in our E12, in our discipleship, we encourage journaling. We encourage you to write down what you learned that day in your devotion. And I've heard 
so much excuses that I can't write in my notebook or maybe I can type but you know just just start doing your journal because this is very very important in building your faith because when you are in the waiting room on God or in the waiting room of God in life in this life the thing that you will write down today, you will still remember 10 years from now. Why is it so important for us to write down our, the lessons that we learn? Because waiting is always a season to listen and learn. And when you're listening and learning, you need to write it down. When, when many of us were still at school studying you have a notebook right you write the lessons you write what you learned that day because that will appear in the examination but today of course it's all in the computer and you can just save it there and then you will remember that but we're talking about writing down because God always always has something to teach us each day and you need to remember that. You need to write that down so that you can remember what you learned. Now the Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 33, verse 2. At the Lord's direction, Moses kept a written record of their progress. You see, it's Moses writing maybe he has a secretary but then every day of their journey it's being written so they have a logbook of what has happened that day because god wants them to remember how he provided for them so for us today for those of you who are not doing journal are you keeping are you keeping a written record of your progress See, when you do a journal, it's not for anyone else. It's for you. It's for me. So you keep a, 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 a written record of your progress in our Christian life. Now, when you talk about journal, we're not talking about a diary. Because there's a big difference between a journal and a diary. A diary is a notebook that you write what you did that day. Dear diary, today I went to a um, restaurant and I had so much, I enjoyed the food and everything. So today I went to work on my garden. Today I did this, I did that. That's a diary. But a journal is different. A journal is you write down what you learn in your devotion that day. You write it down. It doesn't have to be long. As it's just... It can be short, but you can go back to that and say, like five years ago, five years from now, and say, oh, wow, this is what I did in 2017, that particular day. You can put the time there. So a diary is for events. A journal is for lessons. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 2 says, remember what you have learned about the Lord through your experiences with him. Psalm 119 verse 33 says, It's a good prayer for us when we are waiting. And the prayer says, God, teach me lessons for living so I can stay the course. Isn't that a wonderful prayer? So, God, please teach me lessons for living. And when you write the lessons for living, you will not forget those lessons. And, and the, the prayer is that, so that you will stay the course. You will, you will minimize delay in life because you have learned so much that day. So when you are in a waiting period, what you do is you say, Lord, teach me. I want to learn the lessons in this life. So right. The next one is act as though I already have it. That's what you do. The next thing you do while waiting on God is you write down your lesson and what you learn, and then you have to do something. You have to act as though I already have it. 
Now, typically when we're waiting on God, we, what, normally, what we normally do is, is we wonder, uh, we worry, and we whine. We wonder and say, God, how long will I wait? And we worry, is it going to come? And then we, wait, we whine and say, Lord, it's taking so long. So instead of wondering and worrying and whining, you need to learn to act as though the answer is already there. Now listen to this verse in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Jesus said, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. It didn't say believe that you will. It says believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So it's claiming the promise of God. It's, it's Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the essence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. It is claiming the answer right there before you. And it takes faith. Why? Because when you thank God, after you have an answer to prayer, what is that called? That's called gratitude, right? When you thank God after you prayed and uh, you get the answer to your prayer, that's called gratitude. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. You healed me. Thank you, Lord. You heal my brother or my sister. But when you thank God before you get the answer to your prayers, that is called faith. Because you're already claiming that. Just like our eternal life. Just like that baby in the womb of that pregnant mother. She's already thanking God because it's there. It's sure it's going to come. Romans 4.17 God calls things that are not as though they were. So this is the assurance of God for us. God calls things that are not as though they were. And what is this verse telling us is that everything God created, He spoke into existence. He calls things that are not as though they were. And so when God told Abraham, at this time, next year, you will have a son. God spoke into existence, which is nothing at that time. And true enough, after a year, that exact moment, that exact month, that exact time, Sarah Abraham had a baby. The third key to do while you're waiting on God is this. You have to imitate the habits that grow strong faith. Imitate the life of other people that have displayed great faith. So in your life right now, you, we can grab a book, any book that you feel that you want to read because that person has has been an example in your life. So imitate the life. This is what the Apostle Paul said in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, when he said, We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. So we look up to someone, not idolizing that person, but we take encouragement and great encouragement with them. Philippians 4.9 says, Keep on putting into practice all you learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing. So now Paul is not being arrogant here, but he's just saying, Hey, you've seen my life. So do what I am doing in terms of serving the Lord. Just don't look at my failures, my shortcomings, my weaknesses. Just look at what I have been doing for the Lord. And, and I would like to encourage you to, to imitate that. So parents, we are giving an example to our children. Whatever they see in us, they do. And without knowing, sometimes we are giving them either a positive example or a negative example for them to follow. So the encouragement for us here is while we wait on God, let's not put our lives on hold. While waiting for an answer to prayer, don't put your life on hold because 
waiting doesn't mean that you're going to stand still there and do nothing. Because Paul says, keep on putting into practice what you have learned from me and heard from me. So, don't put your life on hold. Instead, imitate the habits that grow strong faith. What are those habits that grow strong faith? Now, there are five things <coughs> that we should keep doing as a habit in this Christian life. First of all, we need to keep on praying in this life. Don't stop praying. Matthew 7, 7 says, Keep on asking and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. It's a continuing action that we 